Hellos, it's Lacey and welcome back to our space. So today in our space, I have a DIY for you guys. I went to the Dollar Tree recently and I hauled these little wooden houses. I fell in love with them. I saw several other YouTubers haul them and I said, I want these for a DIY. So I picked up a bunch of them. I'm not even sure exactly how many I'm going to use all together. I know I'm going to use at least four of them though. So we have those as part of this DIY. I also went to Hobby Lobby recently to pick up some craft paper. Picked up some buffalo check of paper while I was there. I have not been able to find this paper anywhere in any of their stores. I went to Michael's, they didn't have any. And I went to Joanne Fabrics, they didn't have any. So I was really happy to see that they had that there. So I'm thinking I'm gonna utilize that in this. I also have some scrap pieces of pink paper because in my kitchen, as you can see, there's pink flowers here and some pink over here. My living room and my dining room this year, I am utilizing a lot of pink. And then I have some scrap white cardstock as well. I also have some wrapping paper. I've had this wrapping paper in my stash for quite a while. It is silver, it is really pretty. I have a ton of it. So I may utilize a little bit of this. Also, I picked up some letters when I was out shopping and these are actual black stencil-like letters. They actually look like this here on the back. I hope we don't have that much of a glare. And they are stickers. Though I don't think I'm gonna use them as stickers if I use the letters. Um, I also have some gold ones and some silver ones. I haven't decided which one I'm gonna utilize yet. I'm gonna let the project come together on its own. Then I have a few other accessories like some floral picks and a few butterflies because you know I love my butterflies and stuff. So let's just jump into this DIY and see what I come up with. I also have a hot glue gun and glue sticks. When do I never, ever not have a hot glue gun and glue sticks? Okay. Here I have four of the houses. I laid them out in this pattern here, and I think I really like this. They only have three different sizes. If they had four different sizes, I would have used one of each. So I'm using two of these here. Now the backgrounds are really pretty, but I don't like them. So I'm gonna take each one and trace them out on some of this Buffalo Check backing, and then cut it down to size and place it into my little background and Okay, now that I have all the backings done, I have my letters and I have an E, an M, and an H. And I think you can tell what I'm going to spell out. So I place the letters inside of the box and I think it's too dark to just have the H against the buffalo check. So I'm going to take some of my scrap white cardstock that I have here and use it to put down first on there and then put like the H on the cardstock on top of the buffalo Okay, check. here you can see that I did cut out the white rectangles, but it did not give off the pop inside with the buffalo check that I wanted. So I cut out some pink ones as well and I made sure I just did a small amount around to border it so I do get a pop of color but it's not overwhelming for me. You, if you want to make this, can do it any kind of way you want. But then I am going to place them inside of the little houses like this so it spells out the word home. Now none of this is assembled of course. I have to glue the white to the pink and then the letter to the white and if you notice 
the O is missing, so I will be doing something completely different for that. Okay, when you go to put your letters inside of the box, you want to make sure that you line the boxes up so they sit evenly and the letters are kind of in line with each other. I made sure I did that so that not one of them would be a lot higher because this E is in a taller box so it could have the tendency to be a little higher. Okay, so for the O, I have this really pretty Dollar Tree flower and I'm going to place that inside here to make the O. So this is what my home sign looks like now and I could leave it just like this it would be perfectly fine but you guys know I'm a little extra so I like to go a little extra. So I have three more of the houses here and I did the same thing and cut out the backgrounds in the buffalo check. This one, however, as you can see, I don't have any buffalo check up there because I really don't need that much of the craft paper now that I look at it. I like to embellish it with some of this really pretty wrapping paper that I have here. I think it kind of looks like a fancy um, roofing material or like uh, those 10 roof stuff that they have. And so I decided to cut out some pieces to go in the top of each one of these. Now I think I'm actually going to cut them all the way across where the eaves turn so then we still can see some of the buffalo check and then place them into the top of these and glue all to take and line up all the houses and glue them together on the sides. I'm just going to use hot glue. You can use E6000, but I'm going to glue the sides of each one of these and press them together. And then I'm just going to use a chip clip here and clamp them to hold them so I can glue the next side on to this one. Now these are together and they will sit up on their own. However, I made these so that I can actually stack them with these. So that is what I'm planning to do. I'm going to line these up so that they're kind of in the middle of the other ones. And I'm going to stack them and give a little space so it looks like it's two tiered, which it will be. So once I see where I like it, I'm going to take my pen and mark little dots so I know to line it up exactly. Right, now I've made like little this. marks so I know where these pieces go and I'm going to put hot glue on all of these edges because the backs of these are flat and so all of the edges will stick to the back of this. I have them glued to the back and we're all set and you could leave it like this however I said I'm extra so we're going to embellish it just a little bit more I have this little bird that came from the Dollar Tree it was in a pack of two I do believe so I'm just going to put him in the corner of this section here floating and I think he'll look really cute there. However, I want to build a little tiny nest for him to sit in. So I have several different kinds of moss. I have reindeer moss. I have Spanish moss. I have um, moss sheeting and I'm going to actually use a little bit of the Spanish moss I think here and just build up a nest in the corner for him to sit on. Go ahead and use two of them. I love that these are 3D, that there's a set of wings on top 
and it looks like they're actually in motion. I just stuck them on there because, hey, it is a sticker in itself. I'm is my final project and I love what it looks like. It actually came out better than I had expected. I love, love, love the pop of pink around the borders of the home sign that go along with the pink flower that I have there. And I also like that I decided to add what I'm calling a tree there in the background to help give more height to that side because the other side is a little bit taller. I am going to be probably keeping this right here in my kitchen because it goes so well with the coloring. I have black and white and pink in here. Initially, I thought I was gonna use striped paper for the back, but the Buffalo check just totally works for me. Now you can make this project completely with only Dollar Tree products. And I do believe if you have just a few things in your stash, like some craft paper or even some uh, computer paper or something like that, you wouldn't have to buy each item. I love using wrapping paper, as you know, on a lot of my projects. And so adding the little touch of silver in the back just made an extra effort for me, but you did not have to do that if you didn't want to, or you could put pink up there and it could be really pretty too. So this is it. I love it. I am going to be yeah, keeping it in my kitchen and I hope you guys like this DIY. I will be doing more from Dollar Tree here on my channel. Someone wanted to see another design for these little wooden houses. So, okay, let's get started.
here is my final project and I have to say once again I am in love with these little houses and I think this turned out perfect. It is a gift for my best friend Michelle aka George. You guys if you've been on my channel for a while you have seen her. We usually get together and do a cocktails and crafts or is a crafts and cocktails video every single holiday season for like Thanksgiving and Christmas time. However, we were supposed to get together now and do these videos, some of the little wooden houses, but our schedules just did not work out. So I thought I'd surprise her with this gift. I knew when I saw this home is where the family gathers sign, it would pair perfectly with the house shadow boxes. And so I decided to Photoshop pictures of her four children and place them inside windows in the little houses as a gift for her. Her house is farmhouse style and she recently redid her entire open concept kitchen and living room area. And so I think these will go in there perfectly. I have to say, if you are going to attempt something like this, make sure you use E6000 glue to glue the little plaque sign to the houses because it will not stick at all with hot glue. I did use a little hot glue to reinforce it to stick initially, but it will come loose if you pick it up no matter what. I love using the metal pan to make the metal roofing. You see, I distressed it just a little bit. And I absolutely love using the fairy garden little bird up in the corner with the makeshift tree I did from, I think I had these florals from Joann's. I'm not sure, but they were in my stash. So this is it. This is my home is where the family gathers little house sign and I hope that George loves it. Dollar Tree DIY Wooden House Shadow Box Take 3.
see, it is a farmhouse sign. I had a lot of fun making this. It is a gift for my best friend, Michelle, AKA George. Now, if you've been following my channel for a little while, you know I made her another sign out of these little wooden shadow boxes from the Dollar Tree. And it had her four children in it. It was also propped up on a Dollar Tree sign. And I think that one came out very, very nice. So when I thought I could make a farmhouse sign, Michelle was so excited and said, yes, she would hang this above her kitchen cabinet. So let me start by saying that this is nine wooden houses. I have four of the medium size, two of the short squatty ones, and three of the tall skinny ones. And when you put them all together, it is heavy. You have to use industrial strength glue. Hot glue will not stay together no matter what. I use E6000, I even reinforce certain areas with Gorilla Glue, and then I did use a little hot glue just so the project would stick together. I clamped it all down and let it dry overnight. I will be backing it with a complete board, one piece of wood so she can hang it. Now I'm thinking also about putting some corrugated metal across the back. I think that would be really pretty and very farmhouse looking. But if I do that, it will be only from the top of the houses up to where the flowering tree is. Now this entire project can be done with only Dollar Tree products if you want. I have some things from Hobby Lobby, such as the large letters and the craft paper on back. And Michael's, like the little bench and the hay barrels there. And I do believe that's about it, besides the fact that I used a couple of pieces of wood from my yard and then some things that were already in my craft stash, which probably came from Dollar Tree. I know I did not show the windmill how I made it. I lost that footage, I apologize. However, it is just the leftover pan from the roofing that I did. I cut out a small circle used nine toothpicks and glued them randomly around. I eyeballed it and then I cut out the blades and put those on again, eyeballing them. Then I used a very small piece of floor wire and put it around and I painted it just like the roof. I painted the gray first and then added the black. And I put a little more black on this to give it some dimension. I still may take off the front of it because I have a small piece of wood connected to it from my yard to make it stand off from the back to make it also look like it might spin. And I glued a penny to the top just so it would have a little more of a 3D effect. Also, the barn doors were very easy to do. I just cut the popsicle sticks up and then once I wanted the crossbars, I laid it on top of the other ones and just drew a line and cut it with my little machine. You don't need a machine to do it. You can cut it with scissors. You just have to be careful because popsicle sticks tend to split. So that is it for this project. I'm in love with it and I cannot wait for Michelle to see it, to, to see what she thinks. The little barn doors, I plan on painting the color of her cabinets, which is a blue, but I did dry brush them with a little bit of gray paint for now. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, for liking, and always sharing my videos. And if you're not a member of Lacey Space yet, I don't know why not, go ahead, smash that subscribe button, become a member, hang out with us for a while. We have a lot of fun here. Also, if you like, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Lacey Space, the same way it is spelled here. And I will catch all of you in my next video. Bye, loves.